is that children started to um, make up their own thoughts for the day. So one morning a hand went up and said, oh, Mr. Bethian, can, can, I sh can I share my own thought for the day? They didn't want to read one out. And I was like, yeah, go for it. Um, and, and they just started to make up their own. Um, one boy, uh, his thought for the day was uh, meditation is a superpower. That was his thought for the day. And what was really interesting about his kind of, you know, life background at the time, he joined my class year four, partway through a year. Um, both of his parents were in jail at the time. He was being raised by his 21 year old uncle who was trying to study for his own qualifications at a local college. Like this boy had a chaotic kind of home life. So, so him sharing that was interesting from two points. One, he was engaging with this discussion. And when he first joined, he was kind of very withdrawn and with, within himself. And two, it showed me that we, we had a regular mindfulness meditation practice every morning straight after register. We did two to three minutes of meditation. One, it showed me it was having an impact for him. And more than that, when I asked him about his thought for the day, because that's that was the point of thoughts for the day was that we then explore them. We, we talk about them. And I said, ah, oh, why, why do you feel that way about meditation? Why do you think it's a superpower? And he was like, well, it's, it's a time where I, I kind of forget or I can let go of my kind of bad thoughts, my negative thoughts. And so that was interesting that, you know, it was having the effect for him that many adults uh, report that when you practice mindfulness, you're able to kind of get a bit of space between you and your thoughts. Uh, the other thing is they then, children then started to bring in their own thoughts for the day from home or from out and about. They would see posters. Um, uh, one child's thoughts for the day was um, everyone wants happiness, no one wants pain, but you can't make a rainbow without a little rain. And we explored that and that happiness, you know, leading a happy life is about having a, a rich variety of emotions. It's not just about positive ones. We need to, we need the rain. We need sadness. We need worry and loneliness because we're human and those are natural human responses to life's ups and downs. And secondly, um, you know, how beautiful is a rainbow and that a life can be beautiful with a rich variety of, of experiences, not just kind of happy, positive ones the whole time. And we explored that you can't always feel happy. It's not possible and, and it's not desirable. 